So you have these two conflicting individuals who are all working towards the same goal. And it's uh, one of the great dramas of modern times of how they interacted and how they worked. They were willing to go and take uh, subjects who may or may not have been informed of what they were doing. They were able, they were willing to go um, to the backside of the moon if it meant that they could find out whether or not they had a viable product. To win this race, they had to test. And to test, they needed large, non-immunized population groups, something no longer available in America. Sabin made a secret deal with his native country, the USSR, where he vaccinated more than six million people in Latvia, Estonia, and Kazakhstan. Kaprowski chose an African country in full expansion, the Belgian Congo. A jewel of the colonial empire, it had one of Africa's best organized and most modern healthcare infrastructures at the time. L'Institut Princess Astrid est un des laboratoires médicaux les plus importants et les plus complets de l'Afrique centrale. Il dispose d'un personnel nombreux et d'un matériel ultra moderne tant pour l'exécution des analyses courantes que pour la recherche scientifique et la préparation de vaccins et sérums utilisés dans la lutte contre diverses maladies infectieuses. La sollicitude des services officiels s'étend spécialement aux enfants, l'avenir même du pays. Dès l'école, tous les enfants sont soumis à des examens médicaux et à cette occasion reçoivent un carnet de santé, véritable fiche d'identité sanitaire. There was therefore flawless subject monitoring, making the indigenous population a wonderful experimentation group. Return to political quiet after the recent disturbances. Leopoldville engages in an all-out fight against infantile paralysis, crowding every clinic with mothers and their children, the latter to receive orally administered shots of a new vaccine against the scourge of childhood. It is a live virus preparation developed in the United States by Philadelphia's Dr. Hilary Koprovsky. And it differs from our famed soft vaccine in that it does away with injections. And it must taste good if the children's receptivity to it is a criterion. Sabin and Koprovsky conducted their experiments at the same time, both using a live oral polio vaccine. No AIDS cases emerged in the USSR where Sabin did his testing. But in the Congo, where Koprowski's vaccine was used, the first AIDS case surfaced one year after the vaccination campaigns. Was there, as Curtis suggested, something different in Koprowski's vaccine? In 1958, Albert Sabin analyzed Koprowski's vaccine, called CHAT, and found it to be unstable, contaminated by an unknown virus, which he designated Virus X. He told Koprowski about the findings and received this response. Dear Albert, I have carefully considered your extraordinary letter of November 17th, with its even more extraordinary enclosures. I cannot imagine for a moment that I would dismiss 10 years of work by another investigator with one airy wave of an intraspinal needle. Sir, your letter of December 1st does not merit a reply. It is clear that dispassionate analysis and discourse are impossible for you. Sarcasm and invectives do not take the place of reproducible facts and science. Farewell, my one-time friend and colleague. Sabin moved quickly to make his findings public. In June 1960, his vaccine, deemed more reliable, was chosen to replace Sox. Kaprowski had lost the race. In his Rolling Stone article, Tom Curtis echoed Albert Sabin's findings. Kaprowski's vaccine was contaminated with a virus. He went on to say it was a monkey virus, citing the African green monkey as the source. And there, Curtis made a major mistake. The green monkey does not carry SIV, HIV's predecessor, unlike the African chimp. This was enough to discredit Curtis's findings. Hillary Kaprowski felt that his honor had been defiled and that he had been done serious injury. 
the Rolling Stone folded under and publicly apologized for having published the article. Uh, and that was, as they say, that for the time being. The story could have ended there, but one man decided there were many questions left unanswered. Edward Hooper, a British journalist, went to Africa to pursue the path of polio vaccinations. He was convinced that Kaprowski used the SIV-carrying chimpanzees to make his polio vaccine. During 17 years, he interviewed hundreds of participants and observers of the period and collected thousands of relevant documents. In 1999, Hooper published the results of his research in a book of more than 1,000 pages, and once again, the scientific community was rocked. Good evening. Could AIDS have been accidentally caused by scientists? A new book claims HIV has its origins in apes and monkeys and was passed on to humans when scientists in Africa used primate tissue in a mass vaccination campaign against polio. I'll be asking the book's author whether his allegations stand up. AIDS came about as an act of man, not as an act of God. An experimental oral polio vaccine that was prepared, I believe, in chimpanzee kidneys and chimpanzee blood, and which was fed to over a million Africans in the Belgian Congo, in Rwanda, and in Burundi between 1957 and 1960, correlates so precisely with the first appearances of AIDS that I think what we have here is the route whereby this chimpanzee virus arrived in humans. The intensity of the debate and the depth of Hooper's research forced Hilary Kaprowski to respond. The tissue which I used were kidneys obtained either monkeys from Philippines or from India, which was rhesus monkey, this is the normal term, and there are two other species, uh, Macaca mulata, I forgot the name of the species from Philippines. And this is documented by in print. So you never used chimpanzees to... Oh, never in my life. Oddly, there were no existing documents showing how Kaprowski made his chat vaccine. But archive footage from Kaprowski's chimp facility can shed some light. Au Congo belge, le camp de polio, dirigé par le docteur Courtois, compte 86 chimpanzés sur lesquels on pratique régulièrement des essais en injectant le vaccin anti-polio inventé en 1947 par le docteur Koprowski. Les animaux sont placés dans des cages dont une des parois est mobile et permet d'approcher plus facilement les singes pour les injections hypodermiques. Ainsi se poursuit une lutte implacable contre une des plus terribles maladies non encore vaincues. So Kaprowski's research camp did house chimpanzees and was in fact one of the largest chimp facilities ever created to date. Well over 400 chimpanzees were brought to Lindy Camp in the space of less than two years between 1956 and 1958 and that with one or two notable exceptions, animals which were favorites, which were treated as pets, that every single one of these chimpanzees ended up dead. But the question has to be, why were they killed? Hooper found an ally for his theory. Bill Hamilton was a renowned scientist, the most important evolutionary biologist since Darwin. And Hamilton felt there was a 95% chance that this theory was correct. Is there a possibility here scientists simply don't want to know, don't want to accept perhaps at least the moral, if not the legal liability for what has been done for the AIDS virus? I feel that this is so, and uh, it's one of the most worrying aspects of the case. Uh, I feel it's not only uh, the origin of AIDS that is in question here, it is the conduct of science towards this hypothesis, which has been one of almost um, 
paranoid rejection, I would say. I think I would not exaggerate to describe it as medical science's worst hated hypothesis. And there is, seems to be a great reluctance to publish anything about it or to test any of the available evidence that could be more directly tested. Bill Hamilton made two trips to Africa to collect chimpanzee samples. Sadly, during the second trip, he contracted malaria and died in March 2000. Before his death, Hamilton had asked the Royal Society of Scientists in London, England, to stage a debate on the hunter versus the vaccine theory of the origin of AIDS. In his memory, the conference went ahead. Edward Hooper was invited to present his evidence to Kapowski in the scientific community. It was the first time they had ever invited a non-scientist to debate a theory with renowned experts in the field.